Dear students, in today's session we are going to discuss about plant growth regulators PGRs. Regulation means regulating the growth of the plant which may be in a positive direction, it may be in a negative direction, it may be promotory, it may be inhibitory. These regulators are also known as plant hormones or phytohormones. Now what may be the chemical nature of these regulators? After all these are chemicals in one sense of word. So major characteristics of these regulators are that they may be indole compounds that is one chemical group or they may belong to adenine derivatives. Children I am sure you have heard about adenine in connection with DNA and RNA. So it can be adenine derivative, it may be carotenoids derivative that is another chemical group to which regulators may belong. Then they may be terpenes or they may be in a gaseous form like ethyl alcohol or ethylene. So these are the chemical backgrounds of these regulators. Let's know more about it. PGRs that means plant growth regulators we can put in two groups. The first group will be plant growth promoters. Those PGRs which are promoting the growth of the plant somewhere or the other. Plant has so many tissues, so many areas, so many kinds of places where growth is taking place. So it is acting as promoter. These will help in cell division. Children you know that cell division comes into picture when one cell divides into two. So it is growth. So it is promotion. It is promotory activity. So it helps in cell division. It also helps in cell enlargement that is increase in the size of cell. So first one cell becomes two cells and now both the cells enlarge or two cells become four cells and all the four cells enlarge. With the result there is growth. So some of the PGRs help in enlargement of the cell. Then pattern formation. In any tree there is some pattern how branches will come, how many flowers will come in one twig, how many fruits will be hanging from one twig or how many divisions of particular branches, there is some formation. That formation of plant body is also controlled by these PGRs. Then there is tropic growth. You all know about tropic growth, phototropism, etc. So that is also influenced by PGRs. Flowering, which is an important aspect in the flowering plants. Only when flower comes, then only the fruit will come. So flowering is also induced by these regulators, PGRs, that is promotory activity. And then fruiting means fruit formation. Children, you know that flower comes and from flower the fruit will come or ovary of the flower will be converted to the fruit. So fruiting is another important phenomenon which comes in the growth aspect of the plant and it is also controlled by growth promoting regulators. And then seed formation, once the fruit is formed, seed should form because then only other plant can come out from these seeds. So this also involves growth. So all these are promotory effects of plant regulators or PGRs. This is one group. PGRs in two groups, one group we have discussed that is promoters and other group is inhibitors. So these are called plant growth inhibitors. That means they are going to inhibit some growth. It seems why inhibition, why stopping, but there are certain points in plant growth where inhibition becomes important. For example, plants response to wounds and stresses. Suppose a wound is created on plant physically or naturally. Now that is a stress. 
on the plant. The plant has to face this stress and come out of this stress. So, particular regulator PGR will help plant in sustaining this stress. That is why we can call this regulator as stress hormone. Children, I am sure you already know about stress hormone in you, in your body that is adrenaline which is coming out from adrenal medulla. Whenever we have any stress that hormone comes and helps our body to face the stress. Similarly, in plant body this PGR which has inhibitory effect will act as stress hormone or stress regulator. So, this is one part of inhibition. Other is dormancy. You all know about dormancy. When seeds are kept not in soil, in the container, they do not grow because they are in dormancy. Only when you put seeds in the soil, put some water, provide moisture, proper conditions, then it will germinate. That means dormancy is very important. If dormancy was not there, then the moment seed is formed, it will start growing again. So, that dormancy is inhibition of growth, inhibition of germination and that is also brought about by PGR. So, again that PGR will fall in this group inhibitory PGR. Then abscission, falling of leaves. We know leaves fall in many trees in a particular season and those leaves are brownish in color, dry in nature because the excretory matter of the tree is gradually collected in the leaves and when it is full of excretory matter it falls. So, that plant or the tree can get rid of excretory matter. Children you know you have kidneys to bring about excretion and end product is urine which you give out. You have a limitary canal where food is digested and the rectum is storing the food after digestion which is a fecal matter and it is ejected out when you go to washroom. But trees are not doing all these things. So, where their excretory matter will go that is collected in the leaves, then leaves dry and they fall along with the excretory matter. That means abscission is very important and that is done by not permitting leaf to grow further but drop and that is also done by PGR of the second group that is growth inhibitors. So, children I am sure you have understood the difference between the two groups. In both the groups the regulator the PGR is doing the job in one case it is promoting growth for a positive purpose, in second group it is inhibiting growth again for the positive purpose. We go further to understand the details. We now understand the details about five different PGRs, namely they are auxins, gibberellins, cytokinins, ethylene and abscisic acid. Now, we will discuss about each of the five in detail. Starting with auxins, very important PGR, plant growth regulator. It has growth regulating properties. All the properties associated with this PGR are helping in promotion of the growth. Produced by growing apices of stems and roots. Children you know when you put seed in the soil a small shoot comes out and a small root is going down and both the things are growing further and further. That means at the tip of the shoot and the tip of the root which we call root apices and shoot apices these auxins are there which are helping it to grow especially the elongation. Help to initiate rooting in stem cutting. I am sure you know what stem cutting is. In certain plants we take the stem cutting and graft it on the other tree and this stem cutting will give out roots and start growing. Now, this growth of root in this stem cutting is also due to auxins a plant growth regulator. If this was not there then stem cutting and uh, grafting 
those kind of procedures could not take place. It promotes flowering, especially in pineapples. We all know that how important the flowering is. Unless flowering takes place, the fruiting will not take place. And the purpose of plant is to prepare, to make, to form more seeds. And the only process is to have flowers, then fruits, and then seeds. So flowering is an important aspect. Auxins help in flowering. It prevents fruit and leaf drop at early stages. Suppose there is any fruit on the tree and it is not ripe, it is not fully formed, it drops. We cannot eat it. And if leaves start dropping unnecessarily, then plant cannot do the photosynthesis, cannot prepare food for itself. That means early dropping should be avoided. Fruit should drop only when it is fully ripe. Leaf should drop only when it is filled with the excretory matter, not before. So early dropping of fruits and leaves is stopped by auxins. So that is another important role. It promotes the abscission of older mature leaves and fruits. On one hand, it prevents dropping of early fruits and early leaves. On the other hand, it promotes dropping of mature ripe fruit and the leaves which are filled with excretory matter, which is again an important phenomenon. Inhibits growth of lateral or axillary buds that is apical dominance. Children at this point I would like to explain you what I mean by apical dominance. The shoot is growing upward in elongated way and it will go on growing that way without giving any branch. But if you just cut a small tip or knock out a small portion of the tip of this shoot then at that point two branches will come out because now that apical dominance is inhibited. So as long as the tip is there, the growth is only in one direction. That is called apical dominance. It will not allow side branches to come. The moment you pluck the tip, the two branches or more branches will come because apical dominance is inhibited. Now this all process is taken care of by auxins. Auxins are causing elongation, now it is causing formation of branches. So auxin has important role in branching in the trees. It induces parthenocarpy in tomatoes. Parthenocarpy means producing a fruit without seed. So that is possible only if fertilization is not there. Now that parthenocarpy also has auxins in the role. Auxins have important role in parthenocarpy, especially when we produce seedless tomatoes. It is used as herbicides. It is very interesting. When auxin is used as herbicides, it will kill those weeds which are dicots, dicotyledonous. That means if there is a field and if you have a crop of monocot like wheat, like rice, now monocot plant will not be affected by this but diacot will be affected so that all the weeds which are diacot will be killed and monocot crop will remain healthy. Sometimes gardeners use auxin to prepare lawns, the weed free lawns just by the use of auxins. So students, you have understood the important role of auxins in plant growth. We move on to second PGR is gibberellins. It is also very important because it is a promotory PGR and it is acidic in nature. Children, you must remember that it is acidic in nature. That is why we say gibberellic acid, GA. It produces wide range of physiological responses in the plants. It increases the length of axis. It is sometimes used in grape plants to make more big axis with the grapes. It helps fruits to elongate like apples are round but with the help of this particular PGR the apple will become little elongated so a better shape is achieved. It delay senescence so dying of the plant tissue is delayed by gibberellin. 
it is speeds up the malting process in brewing industry which is very important phenomenon and increases the length of stem in sugar cane by increasing the length of sugar cane we increase the output of sugar almost by 20 percent next pgr is cytokinin as the name indicates it helps in cytokinesis in cell division dear students you know there's nuclear division which we call karyokinesis and there's cytoplasmic division we call cytokinesis the cytoplasmic division is looked after by this particular pgr cytokinin so naturally it will be helping in growth so it affects cell division it is synthesized in root apices developing shoot buds and young fruits it is very natural that wherever growth is taking place cell division is taking place and at those points cytokinin has to be present it helps to produce new leaves again the growth lateral shoots i told you if you pluck the apical portion lateral shoots will come out again growth is required so cytokinin will be there and adventitious roots formation that is growth in the root area it also helps to overcome the apical dominance children you already by now know the apical dominance and it is overcome by cytokinesis when you pluck the tip of the shoot then new shoots will come out with the help of cytokinins and also of course auxin it helps nutrient mobilization formation of food is taking place in one area of the plant and it has to move to other areas that is also helped by cytokinins and it delays leaf senescence falling of leaves so these are the important functions of some of the pgrs other pgrs we are going to discuss in the next session in this we have discussed two groups of pgrs and also about auxins gibberellins and cytokinins with this we come to the end of this session thank you